Oh, hello. Uh, welcome to another video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be looking at my Kazakin kill team that I've just finished painting. I, I realised I didn't do an assembly guide for these guys, uh, so it's going to have the assembly guide in there as well, and a little bit of a ramble about painting and uh, where we get our inspiration from, and things like that. So, people might be wondering, usually when I assemble a kill team, I'll do a video about the assembly, and then I'll do a separate showcase video where I talk about how I painted them. For a couple of reasons, I, you know, this kit's actually a really good kit. Um, it's an, a nice modern kit. Assembly's really simple. There are basically no pitfalls. Well, there's one. There's one thing you need to know about that we'll go over. But apart from that, there's not really much to say to fill up a um, a, a kit review video. Plus, the Kazakin kit's been out for ages now, and other people have probably done that content. But likewise, with the with the um, the painting side of things, basically, I, I use a lot of other guides and things on the internet, and I will go through those. But I'm not going to present the colours that I use and things like that as if they were my own um, creative uh, choices, okay? So, there is just one thing um, when it comes to assembly that I you need to understand. And this is on the first page, and in typical Games Workshop uh, fashion, it's kind of explained in a not particularly straightforward way so what this is saying is anywhere that you see a one on your instructions you can build any of these sets of guns so that's smelter guns plasma guns grenade launchers flamers and hotshot volleys okay so you can build any of those anywhere you see a one it's just confusing because through the instructions they'll show you random a random one of these and if you've built other kill teams you'll think oh these, this is the only way I can build a plasma gun. Well, it, it's not like that at all. You can fit any of these arms on any of the torsos, okay? Now, the um, the hotshot volley gun here and the regular hotshot guns, they are actually linked to specific um, backpacks with hoses, but with, the, with the, um, the other special weapons, you don't need to be very careful at all, okay? um heads obviously it's just any head for a lot of them as well where it says number two and we'll go through that as you go through it all right so we're going to start with the sergeant so this is my sergeant here i think she looks really good um so there's five options that you can in theory make with this you've got plaza pistol and chain sword which is what i've gone for you've got the um the power sword and the bolt pistol the power sword and the um hotshot last pistol uh, and you've got the uh, regular hot shot uh, last gun, okay? Or you can make a gunner. So like I said, if you're following these gunner instructions, do you see that yellow one? That means that you can use any of the pieces that we looked at on the previous slide. So you can use this legs and torso to make any gunner, okay? And then if you're making the, the sergeant, you've got some hidden options as well. So here, if you look, if you're going for the chain sword and the plasma pistol... You can also go for a pointing arm instead of the chain sword. The same with the power sword, bot pistol, you can go for a pointing arm, power sword um, and hotshot las, you can go for the pointing arm, okay? I'm going to assume there's nothing stopping you going off piste with these and doing um, power sword and uh, plasma pistol, right? You'll just use this uh, arm A77 and then this arm A74. But I know that's not a valid thing for us as kill teamers, but it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a valid thing in 40k. I'm not 100%, but I'm just assuming so. Usually with points, you can just have whatever you want. Uh, a little bit interesting to talk about the heads. So, um, I realise a lot of people don't care, but I find it really interesting. Um, the sergeant head, If you all the way through for all of these, you basically you've got, um, in the kit, you've got 12 heads that don't use gas masks, and you've got 11 heads that use gas masks. So you can have 10 guys just all with faceless gas masks. You can have 9 guys with faceless gas masks, and your sergeant, who has like a gas mask that's unclipped, that's hanging down by a strap, okay? Or you've got 12 gas maskless heads, two of which have no helmets on, so you can go for 10 all with helmets and without gas masks, whatever you want to do. So... What I find really interesting with these is that the uh, one sergeant head is, at least to my read and the way I've painted it, so, you know, in my head, is a female uh, head. And then the 
other sergeant head here that it shows you is a male head. Um, and sometimes not the easiest thing to tell, but um, I, I, if it makes perfect sense for Cadia. Is, 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 we're not dealing with the Scholar Pagenium here, so we're not dealing with the thing of, well, there'll be more... Arguably, there are actually more male scions just because of the number of head, heads they give you. Although, if you go all gas mask heads, you don't need to worry about it. But I just thought it was an interesting thing to, to note that you have got that mixture there. And because they're not sisters of battle, it's the same legs and torsos regardless. It's just the heads is the only different part. The same as the Cadian shock troops, I think. Uh, so then, that's the sergeant. Really the most interesting stuff to say here. So then we get through the rest of them. The combat medic. So again, if you're building the medic, you've got a specific medic head that's on the sprue. It's got the the medic symbol on it, right? Um, and then you've got a little front bit for the medic, and he's got a little bit on his back that you can't quite see in my photograph. So you either follow the instructions for the um, the specialist, or you can build a gunner. Again, it shows a flamer. You can put any gunner on this legs and torso set. Or you can build a Lasgun guy. Then we got the Demo Trooper, um, you know, uh, which is pretty cool. He's got the kind of whole get up. Always think he needs a pair of rollerblades. If you've played um, Metal Gear Solid Two, I want to say one of the bosses is is a guy called Fat Man who's in all the anti-explosive gear, but then he also has rollerblades on. Really weird game. I'm awesome, but really weird. Um, so you've got your mine. Uh, two little things to notice here, I guess. The torso rear, this A114, is the same for all the builds. But if you're building the specialist, you'd use a different torso front, A122. Whereas you will end up with a spare front that you don't use then if you wanted to use these legs for a gunner or a basic trooper. The head for the specialist is a little tricky, I suppose, because you've got to put the little um, blast shield face piece into the into the head but apart from that pretty simple build you know not much to say about these you can have a little like, paint job which looks much better not blown up to like it like a lot of things the camouflage looks a lot worse blown up to this scale than it does with the naked eye but then i would say that wouldn't i Recon Trooper, and it's exactly the same deal right you've got your specialist who's pretty straightforward if you don't want to build the specialist you can build a gunner, and again, it can be any gunner, or you can build a trooper. And then we've got the sharpshooter. I do think, if I say so myself, I did a pretty good job on the sharpshooter's face. That, that's really cool. I'm proud of myself. But again, it's the same deal. You build the specialist, or you build the um, the sort of non, non-specialist, the, the gunner or the trooper. What's interesting with the sharpshooter is... If you look at some of the others here, uh, the the medic and the um, the recon trooper, they've got special heads to denote medic and recon trooper. They don't have um, gas mask variants for those special. You could put a gas mask head on and lose the eye thing and the extra antenna, right? If you wanted to go all gas masks, with the sharpshooter, you actually get the choice to build a gas mask head. That still has the sharpshooter goggles on the top, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, Vox Trooper again, same, same, same deal. Um, like the, like the, um, the, the sharpshooter, the Vox Trooper has an option for a gas mask version with the extra antenna, or a, 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 a gas maskless version with the extra antenna. Don't know why those two. Maybe is it because um, someone will tell me the recon trooper and the combat medic are they a thing in 40k? But it's, it's interesting to me. Okay, Vox trooper, and it's the same deal. You can build him that way, or you can build him again any gunner, or you can build him as a, a trooper with a las gun. And then we got the first trooper gunner that doesn't build a specialist. So I happen to use this one set of legs. Um, I happen to use this one sort of leg and torso set to build my. Uh, single basic trooper that i need and he's got the um the, the face thing here which again always reminds me of metal gear solid where you got the um the genome soldiers with the, the face things don't know why i'm on such a metal gear solid reminisce with these kazakin but i am uh then we got the trooper gunner here that i decided basically to follow the blue instructions to build a plasma gunner again you didn't need to you can build him with any gun 
I really like the head that I chose for this guy. You can't quite see it in my photograph, but um, he's got a couple of playing cards tucked into his leather band around his helmet in that very classic kind of Vietnam War movie thing that you, you see quite often. But I thought the plasma gunner would have a kind of... He would be the superstitious one, right? He would be the one <coughs> with a preoccupation for luck because his uh, gun is at risk of barbecuing him, right? And then we got the Trooper Gunner. Again, I think I not to toot my own horn, I think I did a pretty good job on the face on this one with the, the stubble on the bottom lip and stuff. I think I did a pretty good job there. And again, I followed the instructions um, and built the grenade launcher. <coughs> I promise, I'm, with, with the last Tron, with the, the Melter Gunner, so you'll see here, this is what I'm talking about, and actually did do it uh, eventually, right? The instructions here say build a plasma gun. But there's no reason at all why I already had a plasma gun. I didn't want a plasma gun or a trooper. Build a melter gun. There's no problem there at all. Okay. So if you're building these, uh, either for kill team or 40k, really just remember that um, the the gunner arms can go on any set of torsos and uh, legs. So I guess I should take some things out how I painted them. I was noodling in a, a couple of videos ago, like in one of my little rambly bits, that I was thinking of doing some Gulf War themed Kazakin. I guess um, I'm 36. I guess I just remember watching the, like for me, much more than like World War II green army men. Like I remember watching bits and pieces from the Gulf War on the news on TV. Like that's the 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 global conflict. It's kind of sad but kind of interesting at the same time, right? That's the global conflict that was happening when I was a little kid. So. Like my formative idea of a sh of a soldier is in the kind of sand, um, you know, the desert camo, the, the the Gulf War camo, and this is very much based on the American Gulf War camo, which has these distinctive little white and um, black little blobs on. Okay, now someone in the comments when I first floated that kind of idea pointed out that Duncan Duncan Rhodes, formerly of Games Workshop, had done a decent tutorial on. Exactly this. He's got a video, I think it's called like Three Kinds of Camo on a Kazakin, and there's an urban one, a, a desert one, and an ice one. Um, and I'm actually a, a Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy, like I subscribe to the, his stuff, because I think as a teacher, I, I think that people people need to understand this about Duncan. I don't think he's one of the best painters in, in the world. There are many painters that are far better out there than, um, than Duncan. What Duncan is, is one of the best like instructors that there are on, on on YouTube, I think, by quite a long way. He's got a really good manner for instructing people how to paint, which I find really valuable. So, you know, I'm not going to claim that I came up with it. I, I think I've executed it fairly well, but it was following one of Duncan's tutorials. And I, to be honest, I, this is what I do. I follow a lot of YouTube tutorials for different pieces of hobby. So the brown leather is a recipe that I originally got from uh, the painting coach when I was following one of his guides on how to paint Sisters of Battle, right? Um, or Ram Arted Lady is a, a way he does leather. So I, I pinched that for my brown leather. Now, I wasn't quite sure what color I was going to do my leathers. Did I want to try them, do them um, black leather? Which sounds dumb, but if you actually go and look at photographs of soldiers in the Gulf War, they hadn't, like, invented the desert boot yet. So they were all wearing like Vietnam era black and dark green boots in the desert. It, it, actually kind of funny. It's one of these things where when you you totally understand how historical war gamers get the way they are because as soon as you start actually wanting to look at like real world military and uniform, it's even it's it's like far deeper and far weirder than any of the made up stuff that you can have for Warhammer Forty Thousand, and it's actually really it was really interesting to kind of dip my toe into that world and be looking at some of the reference material and stuff that historical war gamers that for them is their bread and butter. But it is forty k. I decided to give them that brown leather because it looks kind of um, it makes them look kind of old school. It gives them a kind of uh, historical mishmash. So, yeah, they've got this quite modern camouflage, but then their uniforms, you can imagine that underneath their armour, they've got these kind of brown-green uniforms and this brown leathers, and they look kind of more World War One and a bit more refined like underneath their uniform. And it's got that kind of mishmash of historical sensibilities that we hike from 40K. I could have gone black. I could have gone, like, light... 
I could have gone try and light brown and do a kind of more modern, so like post Gulf War when they developed the the, the kind of things you'd see from a modern uh, American uh, or British kind of deployment where they've got those very sandy coloured and they, they kind of totally blend in. But it's this tension between um, wanting to paint a good miniature and wanting to paint something that looks camouflaged. Like, if the whole miniature was sandy coloured, you wouldn't be able to see them. And I think I already go right up across that line where they kind of are blending into their bases a lot. So there was a decision there on my part on what colour to do, because Duncan in his video literally paints the uniforms and the armour and then he just blacks out everything else and leaves it totally up to you. So I did have to make that decision of what colour I wanted to put there. I left the guns black. Again, I know that they're much more modern. Like, if you're looking at, like, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the guns would be all plated in brown desert camo and you'd have, like, camo patterns on the guns and everything else. I just think that if you do too much of that and you make it too Modern Warfare... You just can't see the model. So I had to kind of pitch it. I was kind of pulling on that Gulf War sensibility and then reaching back a little bit with the brown leather even further back like World War One and stuff to try and tie the whole thing together and make it look evocative of something but still 40k and still a legible miniature. I don't know whether I've uh, pulled it off. The black is just a simple, like it's painted black and then Edge highlighted it with Dark Reaper and that's all I did with it. I didn't take it up like if I was doing Sisters of Battle or um, Black Templars, I would do like um, a Dark Reaper and then I would take it up to like Thunderhawk Blue and then I might take it up again to like Rust Grey. But I didn't want the guns to look really shiny, so it's just got one highlight on the guns. You can call it laziness if you want. Um, faces, I do all my faces by following the Darren Latham, who's like the best miniature painter that I I, I can name. Um, who works for Games Workshop, had a YouTube channel, was ordered to take it down. Somebody um, saved his videos and re-uploaded them. They're on YouTube. The channel's called Not Darren Latham, right? And then Darren Latham knows about, and he's quite pleased, I think, that this has happened. He acknowledged it kind of on his Instagram feed. So I don't feel like publicizing it is a, is a naughty thing to do. It's like not underscore Darren underscore Latham. It's just somebody that's re-uploaded all his tutorials and again he is an exceptional painter and he's also actually a really good teacher he really balances those two things um the plasma glow which i don't really i never get on well with object source lighting the plasma glow is from another duncan Rhodes video i don't think that one is free i think it's behind duncan's paywall but i could be wrong but basically my point here my ramble here is i am a hobby man i am not I guess um, I'm not a big difference between me and uh, Zimbad. Zimbad went to art college, and I'm always, I kind of have a nickname for him. I'm always saying, oh, yeah, that's such an art college thing to say. Like, I am not an artistic person in the sense that I, I do not have creative ideas in that sense. I don't look at a thing and go, oh, well, if this bit was purple, it would look really good with this bit that was green. My color schemes are always based. It's coming from a more, like, this is Gulf War, or it will come from part of the 40k law, like, oh, I'll do this company and this legion, and that'll be interesting, or it come from a bit of background, or it'll come from, like, oh, this looks like, uh, you know, this is riffing off this historical military uniform. It's never from colours or, uh, you know, just an understanding of what would look good, or I never go, oh, I feel like painting brown today that's just not how my brain goes i'm not somebody who devises color schemes that are not derivative of something just through an intuitive understanding of what colors look good but i flatter myself i do do a reasonably good job of thinking about stuff magpieing bits and pieces and recipes from other people and then executing them reasonably well like I don't know whether the people who are actually like artists and have that knack of um, visualizing something like, oh, this would look good if it was like green into yellow or something, and then having an intuitive understanding of which paints that they own they should use to do that. I am, you know, I can't do it. I, I do things like, oh, it would be interesting if you painted a dark Eldar that looked like kind of like a Night Lord, and then I'll look at 
some how to paint Night Lords videos. You know, it's just a different way of approaching the hobby, I guess. So, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I think that, obviously, these people who all put these things up on YouTube, they do it because they they want people to copy them, right? That's the point. That you shouldn't feel apologetic for everything you do not being a totally original idea. Or I don't think so, anyway. So, that's my hobby. It's like painting by the numbers, but I guess... I do combine things from different ways and think about things a little bit, but yeah, that's that's the ramble about hobby. Uh, our hobby magpie, I take shiny things and, and smash them together. Um, I feel like the bases need something, right? They need. I'm I'm thinking of getting some of those Mordian corpse grass tufts from GW and just sticking them on the bases. Let me know if you think I should do that or not. There is a certain tension, isn't there, between realism and what looks good on a model. Like, in my head, they're on a desert. It should look featureless and flat. Um, you know, and actually, there's a lot of work that's gone into those bases. You know, there are... Paint them brown, and then I put texture paint on them, and then a wash, and then a dry brush, and then there's weathering powders, and then you put the fixer on for the weathering powders, and it makes the weathering powders mostly invisible, but you can still kind of tell that they were there. Or I can. Um, but then people say faces and bases, and I know the bases are important. And I do wonder if just putting a tufts on, like, half the models would really elevate the... Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, they are finished and varnished, so I don't necessarily want to go back and do a lot of work on the bases. But if you've got some ideas, I will listen to them, you know. And that's basically it. Um... Final thoughts. Did you enjoy the video? I know I kind of muddled together two things. The assembly guide and my kind of painting guide. Because I didn't think I could do either of them. Like as a full video. Because there's not that much to talk about to build them. You just follow the instructions and build them. And there's not that much to talk about how I painted them. Because I just used guides from other people on the internet. Who deserve their shout out, right? Um, so let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, has anybody got any advice how I actually play these in Kill Team? I'm going to try and get a game tomorrow against my wife, uh, who has legionaries. <laughs> I may even take them to Warhammer Fest. Now that we've learned the Warhammer Fest is going to be all open world, I feel like Kazakin, being a shooty team, right, they'll do reasonably well on open board, if they're going to ever do well anywhere. Do let me know your thoughts on the bases, and if you've got any other, like apart from the people I mentioned, if you've got any other hobby YouTubers that you like to um, steal stuff from, or, or Magpie, we should say, right? Let me know in the comments as well. Um, and other than that, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, and you're new, new people finding the channel every day, subscribe, please. It really, really helps our YouTube channel. Um, you know, you're not doing it for you, you're doing it for me, okay? You're not doing it because you want to be reminded when I release a video, you're doing it because it really helps me spread the 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 algorithm notice me and spread it out to other people um leave a comment press like consider becoming a, a channel member i you know if you've got cash to burn why not and and thanks and i hope you have a great evening morning lunchtime whatever time it is when you're watching this bye bye